Hey, everybody, we're live on the internet. Do we lose Grave? He's not back yet. I heard He's him. absentia. Oh, I thought I heard him talk. Oh, no. I'm back. Oh, no. I thought I heard you say something earlier, so we, we went live. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. What? What happened? First in the 2024. Uh, yep. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, I thought you I see already... how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. I see how it is. I go away for a minute and you just leave me behind. Apparently. Apparently. Bye. Well, here's here's my review. It's good. Anyway, bye, y'all. <laughs> All right. So what we're doing tonight, everybody, uh, is we're actually reviewing Baldur's Gate 3. I have not played it because I have a four-month-old, which uh, means I'm not playing it for a hot minute. Excuses, excuses. Yep, 100%. They're legitimate. Whatever. Uh, I've gotten to play... I've watched Chris play, and I've gotten to play around with Character Creator when my brother-in-laws were here. Yeah, and I mean, you've se you've seen at least a good bit of at least the beginning parts, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I've seen those. Um, luckily, I have not seen some of the uh, more flavor flavorful elements of Character Creation. With its physics now. Uh, <laughs> you can meet Spoon. Yeah, apparently. Uh, so, we're going to be talking about that. And uh, I'm going to be kind of proctoring slash hosting to a degree here. So, uh, the way we'll do it is I'll ask a question and then we'll uh, we'll go from Gestalt. Well, it says Gestalt in here, but we'll go Grave, Spence, Nasa. Uh on some of the responses so we don't like talk over each other, but there'll be some points where there's more discussion for everybody. So, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the plan here. So, uh, first thing is I want, uh, Graves already answered this question for himself, I guess is just a short, well, I, 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 I was joking, but yeah, uh, just a short, quick response. Your first reaction to playing it. Well, I had I had it since uh early access, like since the beginning and like I've loved it ever since. Like like it's nearly a 10, 10 out of 10 game for me. For me, it was just basically like like oh my god, that this is like D&D but virtual. And then uh, it was just, everything about it was just amazing. Uh, my first thought was, so pretty, must have. Plus dice, must have even more. But so pretty, must have. Because I'm a thirsty hoe. Uh, my, my only thing I can throw into here is, watching Chris stream it, uh, what, a year ago? When you were just going through the Nautiloid? Uh, I think we went through the Nautiloid. Uh, but yeah, a year ago we went through the Nautiloid. And, yep. But recently we uh, we did do one where we made Uldric. That's true. But I'm just saying it's the first time uh, I watched you uh, play it. I was like, damn, this actually looks pretty solid. And everything is so ugly, so it's so pretty. Like, they made the Mind Flayers look legitimately gross. Hmm. And, well, like, the the only thing I really... Or, go ahead, I'm sorry. That and it... Just everything looks squishy. And so I thought the graphics-wise, it was really pretty. Oh, I mean, it's a very pretty game. Like, I mean... In the same way, like... I'm going to make a lot of parallels with... Uh, Dragon Age Origins, because I think that's another game that is also a CRPG that leaned heavily on the cinematic aspects. Um, like, drag like Dragon Age of its time, it's probably not the most advanced quote-unquote games, but they did, they came up with a style that works and looks pretty and looks like D&D. Like, the whole game, like, from beginning to end, um, 
just the presentation of it especially if you're like used to playing crpgs which aren't known for like their visual flair they're more known for being like strategy rpgs heavy on story heavy on reading um yeah so the next question i have for y'all is kind of a little bit of a bigger one larian definitely raised the bar for any type of computer rpg uh i would say they also raised the bar for studios as well because uh for one they released a whole functional game with no well well compared to what other companies put out and call a finished yeah, product and then you got to get a dlc to fix everything and actually get the real ending of the game so with larian doing that do you think Baldur's gate is going to set a precedent for future games or do you think it's still going to be a standout that the other companies kind of complain about like my personal opinion, I don't think it's going to change the... Like, I think it just makes a lot of the problems with the games industry more acute. Especially with having a different uh, beloved RPG release this year and completely fumble. Talking about Diablo 4, which had a lot of microtransactions and lots of very insidious game design choices where, like... If you like, they would put the g battle pass button next to the enter world button close enough to where you could accidentally click it, like stuff like that. It just makes all that all the more cute to the point to where it shows that what people really want is just a finished game and a like a good, complete game. So, uh, in terms of or, I was going like to say, Di Di Diablo 4 was invaded by capitalism and made it not work. Hmm. I mean, Bobby Kotek fucking act. You could blame so many people for that. Uh, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's a it's a game that was made for shareholders. They wanted to maximize profits, so to speak, so that it got decimated. Uh, that's all it's really made for. On the other hand... We're talking about a private company here with Larian. They don't have that same obligation. So they're like, we're not going to put our stuff on battle passes or the game passes or anything like that. We'll do sales after the game's been out a while. We'll, you know, do some sales, get some people getting the game again. Obviously, they want to do expansions and DLCs and everything. But it's a, I think what people really appreciate about it and... This extends to some other games, too. I know that Cyberpunk had uh, issues coming out, but Cyberpunk was a complete... Like, it was a game. It wasn't supposed to be, like, you know, you have to get the battle pass and all this bullshit. Um, in terms of, like, the CRPG genre, I think it's kind of a standout thing. Kind of like, again, we're talking about something that's, like, really cinematic and really unique in the way they do things. Um, I don't know if that's going to like elevate everything. Like I've been playing uh, recently, I've been playing Rogue Trader and that's a, it's a good CRPG, but it's a pretty standard CRPG. And it came out the same year as Baldur's Gate. And they were actually asked about Baldur's Gate three, uh, owl cat, the people that made this, like, we're not a big company. <laughs> we're not as big as them. We're, we're not as, you know, talent, well, not as talented, but they're not as experienced as Larian when it comes to everything. Uh, they're still, they don't even have their own engine like Larian does. Or does, I don't know if Larian has their own engine, but. So I don't know if you're going to see something like that. What I'm hoping is, I hope it raises the standards of games generally. However, I don't think it needs to raise the standard of CRPGs. Because I think CRPGs are great games. And I think for a CRPG, uh, Baldur's Gate does a great job introducing people to it uh, because it has that cinematic element. It's really good at drawing you in. Uh, whereas, like with your standard CRPG, again, you're gonna it's 
once you're into a CRPG, it's fun. But there is like a learning curve and kind of a uh, you kind of have to get past the reading and you kind of have to sit there and go through slow tutorials and everything. Whereas Baldur's Gate kind of is able to circumvent all that pretty easily. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that they raise the standard generally and hopefully get people into other CRPGs. I mean, uh, to echo off of what is Jassault is based or else Grave is basically saying, saying that basically that if I would make the comparison of 22 of 2022 game of the year, I think it was Elden Ring. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong later, later, just YouTube or so. But that game changed the way how open world format are, are supposed to be and such. And then if that's a triple a and then that that's a triple a studio last year we were stacked as gamers blessed as gamers with just like two of the the greatest heavy hitters going hand to hand for game of the year legend of zelda tears of the kingdom and Baldur's gate 3 Baldur's gate 3 won game of the year and then that that and uh, then that that is a double a studio compared to triple a nintendo but what Baldur's gate 3 did is basically that they have basically allowed themselves to basically bring that D and D at home feeling, feeling more so than just that the whole meme of basically that it is like that the rental version of D and D. It is actually D and D because I think that they did like over like ten thousand voice lines, and then that they basically knocked it out of the park. That they basically tried to predict what each what just each and every character outcome would do i mean i found myself playing playing just basically early on and then i was just like just like let me see if i can talk my way out of this and which in fact that i was did even though that a certain character did not like the fact that i did that i am trying to go a more pragmatic way that the same way that i had played the character up and up in just my I are up in just at the IRL campaign that I play now to answer the question if that Larian basically has set a precedence for basically CRPG. I would say yes, in a sense, because then that with just the storytelling alone, I think then that, you know, that I think that they are inspiring other companies to basically have to up their game up in a sense, as far as in present like more compelling stories and such you know maybe just include a little bit more voice acting instead of being going to more reading heavy side of things but by all but you know like but but by all means that you know that credit that you know that credit is credit is given to where credit is due that Baldur's Gate 3 did basically set that precedent very well um I think that they have raised the bar, but I don't think we're going to start seeing the real, like, repercussions of that for at least another, like, two or three years. Because this was game of the year for 2023, um, it's, it's going to start laying that found foundation and that groundwork for everybody's going to start trying to replicate that um you see these things kind of go in cycles where something is a standout like hades was a few years ago um it, but it was kind of one of those situations where it was during the pandemic when it came out um it really hit that exact timeline in 2020 of you're trapped, you're trying to get out, but you can't, and it's actually a good thing that you can't. That's literally the whole story of Hades the game, and it hit at exactly the right time for that. And I think that Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian has a similar kind of kismet going on, where we're coming off all the the chaos from all of the, the Watsi issues with the... Um, the the OGL and all that last year were coming off of, you know, literally three years plus of dealing with the pandemic where TTRPGs in general have seen a resurgence. Um, 
like I only managed to get into them because of the pandemic. Like the pandemic gave enough time for me to finally to dip my toe into that and look where it's led. Um, I do think that it has raised the bar, but we're not going to see the effects of that for at least another year and a half, two years. Um, I don't think, I don't think that small, smaller studios are going to get left behind necessarily either because there is still value in like the indie stuff in in smaller produced things i think the difference is that larian had such a huge budget combined with passion for their source material for the game world that they were building and for the stories that they were building and that passion paired with budget really made this shine um, it basically just goes to show that when you give creatives the money to be creative, you get some amazing shit. And that's what needs to happen more, even more than just, you know, be a better CRPG, be a better game in general. No, just give creative people the money to be creative and watch them run. Like, it's going to be great if people can keep doing that. Now, hopefully with the game being as profitable as it was, you'll see that strategy followed more but the only problem i have is i like what chris said uh with you know games being made for shareholders is i still see that going to be like one of the main things that we got to deal with especially well i mean we don't got to worry about as much as like the call of duty fans who are now pretty much like madden and fifa waiting for next year's version of the same game to come out just because you'll buy it but yeah, you that would be nearly impossible with the CRPG. Yeah. Yeah, that it's why it's why they don't see games like this as profitable. They don't see games like this as profitable even though they are. Well, they're not as profitable as they would like them to be. Kind of like the people that said that D&D is under monetized and wants to start putting microtransactions into a tabletop game. So and fun, fun. like what Nasa said, I feel that, uh, and it, it got a little poo pooed with, you know, what happened right around Christmas with Watsy, but I feel that Baldur's Gate three had a little bit of a needed, uh, breath of fresh air for tabletop players and for D and D in general. And role play because, like, we let's be honest, there have been a lot of really garbage uh, computer role play games that are connected to uh, the D and D uh, intellectual domain or intellectual property. Like, it's hard, and th this might also be me being outdated in what I uh, since I played. The last really good ones I remember were like coming out around the same time as Fallout One and Two. I I miss like a like I I'm probably one of the worst ones to talk about this on this one, but I, I miss like a solid chunk of twenty years of computer games. To be fair, you're a huge fan of Dragon Age, and those are technically, even though two and three differed, like Dragon Age Origins is definitely a CRPG. And I like I would actually say that Origins is probably a few generations behind. It's a two thousand nine version of Baldur's Gate, though I think it has a lot more flaws. Um, the ambition was there, and that's what, and the passion was there in uh, Dragon Age. But yeah, I would say that I mean you've played Dragon Age, so well um. What I'm trying to say is I feel that there's been a lot of stuff like if you were to slap any type of D&D &D name next to it, it wasn't super great for a long time. Like if it was in the computer or digital domain. And then Baldur's Gate 3 comes around and kind of blows a lot of stuff out of the water. And that's what I'm saying. I feel like it was a necessary breath of fresh air. Especially with the year that has kind of happened for a lot of tabletop players uh, this year. You know, we had the OGL debacle. We've had 
la- let, let's be honest, we've had lackluster publications this year. Uh, and anything connected to D DN- or one D and D seems to just be on fire. So this releasing and being so good, I think was necessary. And I, I hope it does set a pace for the future with some of this type of stuff. If that makes sense. I mean, that that does make make sense. sense. Now, uh, go ahead, Spence, sorry. I mean, that, you know, that the only thing that I was just going to say is then that, you know, about that the other thing that Watsy had did towards at the end of last year, last year, it kind of sucked that they gutted essentially all of that team that was helping out Larian with basically BG3. So It was so sad to read Sven saying that they, he's like, there's basically no one left from the team that helped him. Yeah. And it was right before Christmas. Way to go, Hasbro. Yep. Yeah, it was more Hasbro than Watsy, but I mean, it's basically the same company. To be fair, Hasbro has not been doing great on the toy front. Like, I think at this point, Watsy really is one of the only money generators for the corporation. And they keep like hamstringing it. And, but that, that's like a completely different podcast in and of itself, I think. Um, so to, after getting that one out of the way, let's go back to some fun questions. Um, what is your favorite feature of character creation? And don't say, you know, helicopter dick. Uh, get the Anki. There's, like what aspect of character creation though? Not just like the race. Just is is that just your answer? Great. Okay, so I mean, it's not the most. Uh, okay, so it managed to make a fairly simple character creation without it being too. Uh, like it's a simple character creation, but also a very diverse character creator. So it's easy to make a character that's unique looking without it. Uh, without needing all the sliders and all the other bullshit. You don't got to go Monster Factory levels with it. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I like I get... There's nothing, like, really... Like, people are talking about the character creator like it's really good, and it is for a lot of good reasons, but um, I just think it's, like, you can make a quick character in Baldur's Gate and, like have something that looks really good or you could just hit the randomize and you can find something that looks really good i don't know uh in terms of character creator it's just it's just good just good and also you can be a good that's my answer for me that as that i that my first hour in the game was character creator because that any game with the character creator, I am in there for at least a minimum of 40 minutes. And then that I got to say that all of the various hairs, hairs and colors and such that you get to pick and stuff. It was kind of difficult at first for me to be like, okay, then how do I get color? And then I'm like, oh, that's how you get color. And then that it is always a plus for me whenever that a character creator lets you do dichromic eyes. Because then you can basically create, you know, interesting characters, but much, but you know, like much as Grave says, it's just basically, you can just hit that the random button and just start off with just, you know, some kind of monstrosity going in there. And then that, you know, that I will say that fingers crossed that I do hope that they add in like more races like Tabaxi, ASMR, you know, you know, other things like that, just more exotic races and stuff, just to make it a little bit more fun, fun. But you know that we do have, but but we do have a solid core chunk of basically, uh, basically of that the basic races from just D and D five E. Um, I my so I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a I'm gonna drop a rack real quick. Um. There are the the mod community for BG3, apart from a few dark areas that we're not going to mention here, Simba, we don't go there. Um, but the mod community is actually 
really well and really well supported and really um, proactive at getting shit done. Specifically, there is a mod out there, a, a relatively big mod pack. I've got it wish listed for when I eventually upgrade my computer. Um, that does add in like all of the other monstrous uh, and and other race I and have lineage seen options. That. It's got like 57 additional, and they're all really good quality from the images I've seen. Um, it even has it, like it is a cobalt, huge mod pack. It? It's got kobold. Uh, it's got like all the ASMR, um, all of the like. There's alternative dragonborn options, um, the tritons, like just everything. Um, literally everything that's been published and a few like third party shit as well um, is in there. It's like 57 additional character creation racial options um yeah not anyway, to uh, to so budge in but like every time i see someone post about like baldur's gate online or on twitter they're they're like their characters decked out in some badass armor i'm like where'd they find that oh it's mods <laughs> fuck it's i need to go download like 40 <laughs> mods but yeah continue i'm sorry <laughs> Um, but yeah, so so for, for Spencer's uh, wish list there, there we go. Um, my favorite thing about the character creation um, is the fact that, and, and I, I haven't gotten that far in the, in the game yet to know what the, what the purpose is, so no spoilers, um, but you get to create a companion, quote, quote, um, for your character. It's like literally a two-for-one on character creation. You get to make your character... And then you also get to create, like, their ideal of, like, their their epitome of what they view as beautiful or what they're attracted to or whatever. And I love that. Like, I've never seen that sort of thing before. But it's like being able to, even before you start the game itself, having this image in your head and on the screen of, this is what my character fights for is kind of how I view it. Um, that That's really fun for me. Um, and it, it really kind of sets up this whole, like, it gets you into your character's headspace and immerses you just that much, even before you know what the purpose of it is. Um, which is literally where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> so, also, all the companions have, like, they're so fucking gorgeous. Um, I don't know why and I don't know how, but they all are beautiful. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, that's a thing. Or guides. I think they're called guides or something. Anyway, the, the pretty secondary character thing image that you get to create. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> now, with character creation, the little bit I've gotten to play around, one of the things I love that they've added in is that you can have vitiligo. That's, like, the level they went into to make sure, like, some inclusion could occur. Uh, and really make sure someone could make a character that looks like the way they want to make them. Uh, the the heterochromo, uh, the different colored eyes. I, I'm about to mispronounce the word. Uh, is a cool factor mm -hmm. too. Um, it's definitely fun to play around. Emily made three or four characters when her like <laughs> her brothers. Do you want to play? She handed me the baby. I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm just looking at my child. Well, I guess that, uh, I guess mom's done with you now and you're with me. And the baby's like, I did not approve of this changing of the guard. But I, I really dig that. Uh, next question I got for everybody. Who is your favorite companion of all the ones that you can, uh, you can pick up? Oh, that's easy. Uh, Lysel. Fanboy. Yeah. Okay, I like Lizelle because she's like a pretty complicated character and she's an idiot and you know I love idiots. No, but for real, like when you first talk to her, she's like very gruff and very like guarded and wants to lead the party but doesn't kind of let you take control. To see what you'll do. And the more you get into the game, the more you uh, realize that this is just kind of... You realize that she is uh, just as scared and just as freaked out as anybody. And it's just going through the steps that she has learned 
like because she's a gith she she grew up in a fairly like fascist authoritarian society where everyone worships black Ith and they depend on that on her guidance so like when she, when you're like when she's like in that situation it's just like okay so I'm just going to go what did Blackett tell me to do? Okay, I'm I got to go find a crash so I can go get healed because they got the Zethus so that will heal me. And through that journey and I'm not going to give anything away, you learn just about like you learn a lot about how she processes things and you learn a lot about like like just kind of her like I hate to use the word trauma, but like you learn about like how she's been affected throughout her life and her background. It's really good. I mean, all of the characters are really good. Let let's be clear. Like I know people give like Gail and uh, Will shit for being kind of boring, but I mean they both got good backstories too. All of the characters are fun. But yeah, I just like Lysel first. Also, she's a green space marauder. That's just up my alley. That's just me. That it's like you're speaking my language. I believe for me that you know that I have to go with uh, Shadowheart because that you know that it's just something about just that you know that this you know you know goody two shoes cleric girl that. I like, I like, I like her story a lot, lot, again, like, no spoilers into it, to it, it, that she's a very deep character, that she, that she just may appear like milk toast at first, but once that, whenever you do progress that storyline, and then it's like, oh, oh, what is that redacted that she is keeping with her for, oh, that's what that is. But yeah, yeah, then I, I'm gonna have to go with Shadowheart. Um, I think y'all know who I'm gonna say. Uh, but it's it's the hot vampire elf boy. Um, Astarian is absolute bay. Um, and without spoiling anything, but I've already been slightly spoiled because I can't just take shit lying down and I have to know that he he's okay in the end. Um his storyline is one of the most emotionally destroying and or gratifying in the game. Um, the entire psychology of everything that they put into his character, as well as all the layers and like the hidden fan theories that may or may not be true or not, um, but all of it just combines to make this ultimate um, soft boy, uh, hot boy, must save the boy um, <laughs> character. You can't. Um, you can't fix him. I mean. Yes, I can. You can't. You can't fix him. You can only allow him to destroy you to his level, and then you'll still have fun. Just as a note, though, Asterion okay, so no, also... Again, again, without, without spoiling anything, um, uh, I'm... it's not about fixing him. It's about helping him stand on his own two feet, and that's it. I, I, I like know... Like, it's giving him Sorry, the opportunity ahead. to be himself. I, I know so. bits and pieces about each character's lore, thanks to YouTube uh, on lunch breaks, deciding yep, that, that I Red need to know a, bunch, <laughs> know a bunch about this. Oh, wait uh, a second. But no, it's it's one of those like the number of people on TikTok. I can fix them. You can't fix them. I can fix them. I can't fix them. But it's <laughs> fun, and I'm over here going. Um, you can't fix any of them. There is no fixing them when they might not technically be broken, except um, for Gail. So Sorry, Jamie I don't know. keeps. I don't feeling... think we can fix the boy who wants to eat shoes. That, that... I mean, that... I don't think we can fix the boy who wants to eat boots. That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not okay. I mean, that Gail is just, you know, basically 
He is a fun companion, but he has to be bent on my party. I'm sorry. <laughs> that he can just stay at camp. Just um, give him shoes. Wait, I, I'm so tired of trying to sit there and have this emotional moment with Lizel. And then he just comes along like, what the fuck, man? I thought we had a thing. I'm like, we never had a thing. What are you doing? He's like, but we did have a thing. I'm like, no, we did it. We Dude, didn't if, have a thing. Go back and listen to any of the Drista Arden series. Wizards are like 90% horny. Like, there's like, wizards are 10% magic, 90% horny. That That's just all they are. Okay, just this isn't like it's a major. The, it's a special ink that you have to have to copy down your spell books. Uh, they're all aphrodisiacs, and just nobody tells you that. Yeah. Okay, this isn't uh, a major spoiler, sort of waiting but um, with Gail, you like you can have a romantic se romantic sequence with him, like, and he does like this magic shit where you're like. It's like astral space, and it's like looks like a tool album and everything. And at the end of it, like he's like, "What do you think?" And you could just be like, "Eh, it's okay." And that's like <laughs> the best fucking. Bro, so that's I'll, so fucking mean. Bro. I'll, I'll give, give y'all a breakdown of all the party, and then tell y'all my favorite. Uh, so starting off with Lizelle, really mean, yelled at me found it funny that someone had a video where they literally yeeted her off the nautiloid and just continued <laughs> on on their path. I felt that was appropriate. Shadow Heart. Uh, basic is the Isabella of the game. I have not played the game. I will apologize later if I have just slandered uh, Shadow Heart. Asterion. Stab him. Leave him dead in the dirt. Everybody's freaking out over him. I'm done with him. I do not care. He is the sixth sense of party members to me. Oh, I know which one he's going to pick. Uh, Gail, I don't know why um, you wait, look... Can we, I wanna, can we take this? Oh, we, we should take guesses about which one Hewitt likes. Uh, so then we get to Gail. Uh, high five him. Don't know why you look like a buff 80s fantasy hero when you're a wizard with no strength. Stop freaking out about my feet and my shoes. <laughs> Will... Will, I want to give you a hug, but like he's trying. You you are like you are the most vanilla party member, and you made a pact with a devil. Carlac, uh, too many words that I cannot say on this stream about their uh, their, their simple addiction to her, um, but does seem like a fun character. I know that several people really, really love her, including Claire. Uh, Minx, how are you still alive? You have been. Yeah, I mean, there's an explanation in the game. How, how are you still alive, and why are you no longer Jim Cummings? Which, if anybody, it was Matt did, Mercer, though. I, I know it's Matt Mercer, but <laughs> if anybody didn't know this before, Matt Mercer, it was Jim Cummings. So it was Pete from Disney. Andy or uh, Jahara. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Jahira, yeah. Jahira. Um, I haven't heard much about you. I know you're always involved with Minx and Boo. You're there. I haven't played the game. Uh, really buff Druid Boy. That's weird, dude. Allison. That's weird, dude. Allison. Also, you have eight strength. You don't have guns. Uh, War Criminal. No, I will not save you. Are you talking about Minthara? <laughs> War Criminal, I will not save you. Squidward, most interesting video I've seen on YouTube that didn't get flagged. That's not a party <laughs> member, though. Oh, I didn't know he didn't join your party. I just know there's a really weird scene and Squidward's there, like, with his beautiful chin and all. Um, yeah. Uh, Albert Cub, save it. Dog, save it. Get Tritos. <laughs> From the guy that's not a party member, but that cobalt is one of my favorite things I've seen. And then the best party member ever. <laughs> Take a guess, everybody. Which Withers. one is my which one Withers. is my favorite? Carlac. Brain friend. Withers. Brain friend? Brain, brain friend. friend. Oh, the brain. Okay. Brain friend is my favorite. So us is your favorite. Uh I, I will refuse to call them us 
it is brain friend because the the furthest I've gotten in the game, it, it sounds like a little child, which is very disturbing. No, no, Actually, no. I was they watching... sound like many little children because we are us. Also, I was watching uh, the stream. Uh, the woman and her girlfriend that plays Shadowheart mm -hmm. were doing a stream and they were talking about who were doing the voice acting for everything. And they said that that is like one person doing all the voices for that. That is impressive. That does not surprise yeah. me. Surprise they got me. some like top tier voice actors. So uh, that that is my breakdown of all the companions and some extra entertaining characters. Also, I, I will definitely deserve a Trito. That I love the little bear in Somedy Cobalt. <laughs> I know he's probably terrible and he would like take your kid. The bear in Somedy Goblin, you mean? He's no, not a Cobalt. No, I thought it was a Cobalt that was at the circus that said, do you want oh, a Trito? Oh. Oh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the dirt. Never mind. Don't don't worry about it. No, it's just don't that, worry about that it. little kobold. <laughs> it's not stealing if they're dead. I'm like, I'm adopting you. True rewards. I'm Word adopting. Yeah. The the game is limiting me because I would just pick you up and walk off with you and show Carlac like we have adopted a child now. Yeah, I thought you were talking about. any case, that, that's what I know about the characters that are in it. Okay, this isn't actually, like, a huge... Excuse me. Was that you? One. Yeah, I, I had a bit of a burp. I'm sorry. Okay, that was a burp. It, it sounded a little bit like a wet fart. No. <laughs> Cue it. I'm not you. I'm trying to get a good picture of this guy. Okay, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Are you dropping it in yes. Discord? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to drop dropped, it in Discord. I dropped a gif in the... I die, you die, we all die, big wolf. <laughs> I love this little dude. Yeah, well, there's that guy, <laughs> but there's also this guy. If you're a Dark uh, Urge character. Well, I now, found, I now found another character to love. He reminds me of like that that boogeyman old Disney movie. I just got out watching a documentary about. It's just the Shadow Man. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, he, he, does like, he, he, the, he does look like the Shadow Man. So now let me ask y'all, and then then we'll switch over to doing our our insight check, which I have something for everybody. Cause I don't know if, unless somebody else has a story to tell, if we want to figure out if it's a lie or a truth. Uh, but what is your favorite moment you have had so far through one of your playthroughs? Like absolute, just don't tell me like top five, top one. Oh, damn. Oh shit. It's it's me. Yeah. It's me. I I wasn't muted. You can't prove that. You can prove that. Fuck. Oh shit. Anyway. Um top moment? That's hard to say. Okay, so I guess one of my top moments this is okay, so this is gonna go on a tangent about the quest system in Baldur's Gate. It's one of the things that I really like about Baldur's Gate. It's about perspective on how to approach questing in games. Now, in most games, you... Okay, so what happens? You pick up a quest, you fail a quest, or you complete a quest, right? Yeah. I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. So, in Baldur's Gate, you never fail a quest. You just complete a quest. So... With that in mind, you can actually, like, whenever you, quote, complete a quest, it's just when you're locked out of the quest, so to speak. But it's it's not said as a failure. It's just as an event that happens. So, like, I guess this is kind of like me being cheap with it. But um, 
like there's a quest that you can do or that you can pick up uh when you're walking through the goblin town not the goblin town but like the abandoned village that the goblins are in uh there is a, a deep gnome on a uh ferris wheel not a ferris wheel what is it a, a windmill and they're spinning him around and like after you deal with the goblins however you deal with the goblins i mean you can like talk them down you can use your mark you can kill them whatever um you have to uh stop the machine so my first playthrough when i got to that when i first started the game um i ended up accidentally hitting the button to make the windmill go faster and throwing him off of the windmill and killing him and just seeing it in in my uh quest log it's like completed the deep gnome is dead <laughs> like okay <laughs> cool i did it like i just love that approach I, I love that approach to uh storytelling and that approach to questing where it's like you're not technically like failing things we're not going to gamify this to the point where it's like oh yeah you had to do it this specific way. It's like, okay, well, if you accidentally fuck up the quest, I mean, you still technically complete the quest. Or if something goes awry, like, there's, like, if you meet the hag in Act 1, you can act technically complete that quest in, like, so many different ways. And I don't want to give it away. It's kind of hard to talk about like all the things I like about this because there's like that's so why many... I said one. I know you're you've 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 did this to me. I mean, I'm sorry, but yeah, I don't have a like a specific moment I can really talk about because I know people here like I'm the one with the 450 hours in the game. Um, uh, I have a problem. It's called get the Yankee. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, like generally, I think that moment with the gnome accidentally flying off me, hitting the wrong button, that really solidified the way questing works in the game. So it really stuck out to me. It's like, oh, okay. So we're not really, we're not really talking about like, we're not doing the gamey thing where it's like you fail or complete a quest and you like because in other games, if I failed a quest, I would just reload it. In this game, I technically fail a quest or if a quest is completed, I'll just keep going because, you know, that's just the way shit goes. No, no need to like reload things. But yeah, I guess that's a silly answer, but yeah. I would say for me that it was basically, you know, that this is early enough and then I can talk about this openly that it was like right before you get to that the Druid camp, camp that you are at the wreckage of that the Nautilus, Nautilus, and then that there go that, you know, that, you know, that everybody knows that, that the Mind Flayer, Flayer, that you are this level one adventurer and then that, you know, that your party is like that, what are you doing that you can't go kill that thing? That that thing is going to murder you. Well, then that my character basically, I basically went up behind it and basically got a critical hit on it, killed it in one shot. And then I'm like, okay, that was it. And just, and then that, you know, suddenly I just failed on a perception check and basically got into a tussle with just, you know, a starian. A bit, and then that's, and then that that's just a pivotal moment for me. Um, my favorite moment was was finding withers. So in in the. Uh, when it was still in early access, I never got very far at all. Like, I'd only picked up uh, Shadowheart and Gale. And 
I still was, like, I still didn't know that literally you can get everywhere. Like, there's always a way to do something. Um, I didn't realize it was truly open world. Um, and so I picked up Shadowheart, we went up the hill, we found Gale, and then I went around and was trying to get into the Druid camp. I didn't even go through the temple complex, uh, to find Withers. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, and so when it came off early access and I opened up my first, my first playthrough, only playthrough, uh, which I'm still haven't finished because I'm waiting to upgrade my computer, um, and I, I, I figured out, oh, oh god, I can actually go in there. I just have to kill these couple of bandits, and then we fall through the floor, and then voila. Um, so finding Withers and realizing at that point that you've literally got an intelligent undead buried in a temple, and he's just like, cool, I'm gonna wait at your camp, bye. That's when I realized that this game was made by people who love D&D as a game. That this game is a heart project for D&D and TTRPG players. Because it is the most absurd sort of thing that I could see any of myself or my DM friends doing. <laughs> and it actually happened in a fucking game. <laughs> and I love it. Because it's proof. We just have this this undead bone guy living in living in our camp now and he'll he'll resurrect us live in cleric yay like it's just it's so random but it works and it works because of people that at larian made D D and they love D D. that's me uh my favorite moment because i've not really played much of it is high-fiving Gale. Because I thought that was such a silly thing and they added it as an option and that to me is a very D&D &D thing. My favorite moment with Gale is as the Dark Urge and it's on the same moment but it's not necessarily a high-five. Lordy. Alright, so Ooh. I've... I, I, I think I'll go ahead and take this with a little bit of time we have. I got some facts and uh we'll do we'll do two truths and a lie for this investigation check. Ooh. So here are some facts about US presidents. Okay? One of these will be a lie. Two of these are true. First one, Gerald Ford was a model. Yes. Well, I'm just I'm just listening. To him. So, first one oh. is Gerald Ford was a model. Second one. John Adams had a dog named Satan. The last one. Herbert Hoover was the first person to receive a Medicare card. Which one of these is a lie? Uh the second one. Ooh. I'm going to go with the first I, one. I believe Satan Dog is going to be the, the lie. Nope. John and Abigail Adams had a dog named Satan, and the other one was Juno. Damn. Harry no. Truman. Harry Truman was the first person to receive a Medicare card, not Herbert uh, Hoover. Oh, nobody got that right. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> So I just, I wanted to throw some funny ones because Gerald, like I figured everybody would figure Gerald Ford was actually a model. Uh, also, mm -hmm. did you know Gerald Ford's birth name was Leslie Lynch King Jr.? You, you know what? I should have went with the, I, I should have went, went with, with the third the one King. because that was the most sensible knowing Hewitt. He would pick the two. <laughs> Other fun fact uh, that's kind of super weird. Teddy Roosevelt was at Abraham Lincoln's funeral procession and had a lock of his hair. Huh. Mm. Yep. Just another thing to say about Teddy Roosevelt that's fucking weird. Anyway, it's it's good to be in 2024. Uh, Schedule-wise, we are going to pick back up with our normal schedule, which will be uh, this Monday is Holy Winds. Wednesday will be Redwell. 
and I believe we're doing the lady afterwards Thursday, Spence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, that, Hewitt, mm-hmm. if you want to talk about it, no, we're do- there I, might be something. Uh, uh, just a second, because also next Sunday is Kitchen Table, and I'll turn it over to you for that. Oh, uh, yes. So this week, uh, we are finally, Hewitt and I have been working, we've been in the laboratory, so to speak, cooking up a podcast. I don't know why I'm speaking. We we made a podcast. I uh, just like how uh, he, he's doing this, and I, I was really expecting him to go with laboratory. I, laboratory. I would, like, I would like. What is this? Some uh, Frankenstein stuff? Oh, Lisa Frankenstein. I mean, we're going to be talking about. We might so, talk about Frankenstein. You never know. Uh, I, I know I did, he said Frankenstein I, by her. Is this some Lisa Frank stuff? No, that's I, I, some Lisa Frankenstein is a real movie that is coming out before Valentine's Day. It looks good. Look at the trailer. I'll, I will I'll check that out. That. But I, I, all I heard was Lisa Frank, and I'm like, yes, there is now a cryptid that is basically a glitter dog. I, I don't know. I, you are welcome. I think I called Mary Shelley Frank Shelley, too. So I don't know. <laughs> like, that That happened in our podcast recording. I don't know if that's going to be an episode. We're making a paranormal podcast, and hopefully it... We will have everything. I just got confirmation from the guy that we get the music from. Uh, we're good to go. So we're going to be releasing at least two episodes this Tuesday. Should be Backwoods Obscura. We're on RSS.com. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm learning. We're learning how to broadcast it out to the masses and you we talk about weird strange and just things that we like like we're paranormal buffs so it's mostly just us bullshitting about uh the paranormal which we love so if you like if you like something like that uh please give us a listen we are back backwards obscura and yeah that's all i got cue it take it all right. Uh, if you'd like to find us on social media, uh, we are Team Bonus Action on Facebook, Instagram, Blue Threads. Uh, Blue Threads, yes, that is that is the Blue platform. Threads. What's the other one? Blue. Blue Sky. Blue Sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't messed up in a while, y'all, so I had to do it at some point. <laughs> Uh, we are also at teambonusaction.com. You can also find us on Twitter because I refuse to call it by that Twitter. letter uh, that we are bonus underscore team. So if you would like to give us a shout or come check us out, you can. Uh, you can also, if you go to teambonusaction.com, find out uh, some of the people we are partnered with. And uh, we should have a charity up sometime soon. The The charity clerics have not gotten back to me on that, but uh, we should have another charity that will run until about March. So we will see about that. Hey, and since uh, Knox is not here, y'all, uh, don't, don't let Jimmy Oh, my gosh. That was so bad. Comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> I specifically Thank you for tuning in to another Bonus Roundtable podcast brought to you by Team Bonus Action. If you'd like to find more out about us, you can go to our website at teambonusaction.com, or you can check us out on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube is Team Bonus Section, or on Twitter at bonus underscore team. And since Knox is not here, don't let your meatloaf.